That's right, you already titled this video. This video I'll be discussing the lore of Skylanders. Well, kinda. I say kinda because sometimes lore contradicts itself and other things like that. Also, I just realized that the script for this video is 8 pages long. So uh, buckle up because this is probably going to be a long ride. The lore is very weird and confusing in Skylanders, but I'll be doing my best to tell you guys the lore of Skylanders in chronological order. I'm not going into the, the creation of Skylanders or anything like that, I'm just going by the first to last game. I'm just going over the lore of Skylanders between the years 2011 and 2016, because those were the years the Skylanders games were out. I have no idea how long this video will be, like I said, probably going to be longer though because it's 8 pages long. This video is going to be very long, so with all that being said, let's get into the weird lore of Skylanders. Okay, so the story we get at the beginning of Skylanders Powers Adventure, when we get introduced to Skylanders, I know, shocker, we get introduced to the Skylanders in Skylanders Powers Adventure, we meet their mentor, or master, Eon. Eon has a portal master, and is the last portal master. They never really explain what happened to all the other portal masters, but I mean, it doesn't really matter that much. Portal masters can control the portals, and according to some sc story scrolls in SSA, you can only be born with this ability. You cannot learn it or anything like that. You must be born with it, so that's kind of cool. Eon and the Skylanders practice thing called the Core of Light, which helps spread light through all the Skylands and keeps the darkness at bay. The Core of Light is made out of a bunch of different elements, which when you put together, make a giant machine that can spread light, which is the good side. In the beginning of the first game, we get introduced to Chaos, the main evildoer in Skylands. We see this cool looking evil bad guy, but it actually turns out to just be a little kid. But I'm actually pretty sure somewhere it says that Chaos is actually 50 years old, so not a little kid. Yeah, but anyway, we get introduced to him and his servant Glumshinx. Chaos's main goal was to destroy the Core of Light. He has tried to do this a lot, and this time it's no different. Or is it? When Chaos arrives, he launches an attack with a bunch of his minions, just like always, and the Skylanders defeat him pretty handily. But this time, Chaos has him up his sleeve. We see a giant silhouette of what we later find out to be the Hydra, and it destroys the Core of Light which not only spreads darkness over the entire Skylands, but also causes a huge explosion, which basically kills Eon. But not really, because he turns into a spirit, but it is just a head and cannot use the portals to help the Skylanders. Also because of the exploding, the Skylands get blasted to Earth and made smaller. If the Skylands can be brought to Earth, does that mean that Skylands is in the Milky Way, or at least somewhere in the same universe as ours? I've always thought about that. Still though, it doesn't tell me why to pay to get them. But all this sets up the story pretty nicely on how they got here. Now we find the Skylanders and because I guess we are portal masters, we were able to bring them back to Skylands and help them defeat Chaos. Now the thing with Skylanders lore is that not a lot of the story or lore gets told to us while we're playing the game. Most of it is just dumped on us in the beginning of the story. It's not like that for every single game but for most of the games it's like that. But we do get some stuff. The whole story of the first game is basically a giant MacGuffin story, going to different levels and find things to put inside a bigger thing to make an even bigger thing called the Core of Light. But we find all these other eternal sources and a couple different objects like an undead mask and other weird objects to help us rebuild the Core of Light. As we add more and more eternal sources to the core, Chaos's darkness that he spread it over Skylands decreases and decreases more, until we rebuild the entire Core of Light and he is forced to retreat back to the Outlands where he came from. I wish that we got more information about the Outlands, it seems like a pretty cool place, and I wish we got more levels here because it looks really cool. But that's besides the point. Chaos flees back to the Outlands, and we do one final assault on his castle. Us and the Skylanders battle Chaos one more time, and we fight him and his Hydra, and also destroy his Hydra in the process. We capture Chaos, and in the end, Hugo, on Eon's order, sends Chaos to Earth. Just like he did to the Skylanders at the beginning of SSA. He gets launched to Earth, and actually, it looks like he went to Africa of all places. And just in case you want to know, I looked at a map of Africa, and based on where the orange trail ends, it looks like he landed somewhere in Tanzania, Africa. Although, this doesn't matter that much since this part of the story gets retconned at the beginning of the next game, which is Skylanders Giants. So, Chaos landing in Africa, like I said, gets retconned at the beginning of this story. Honestly, it's probably for the better. I don't see how they could fit Chaos escaping from Tanzania into the story. So instead of that, in the beginning we get Chaos in a toy store. And there are Skylanders in the toy store. 
Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this part of the story is really freaking weird. So since there are toys of Skylanders in this toy store, does that mean that Skylanders is telling us that none of this is actually real and there have actually been toys the entire time? Or or that Skylanders are always just toys and none of this is real? I mean, they talk, but they're in a toy store. It's very weird, like I said, but best not to talk about it that much since it basically it gets brushed aside. Glumsink somehow connects to the portal power by the TV and tells Chaos that he's on Earth. Chaos sees a portal by the TV and he goes to teleport through it but gets electrocuted but it works and it sends him back to the Skylands. At the same time, an the ancient Skylanders called the Giants get mentioned. Giants were the first ever Skylanders and in a big battle against the Archeans thousands of years ago, they fought against them and defeated them. But the Fist of Arcus, by defeating the, the King of Archeans, that fist had a lot of power in it and it sent a giant shockwave that sent the giants to earth but in doing so all the archaeans fell to sleep since they had no more masters since the hand of arcus was no longer being used by any archaean but now we found them on earth also around this time our main character is flynn picks up a new ship that he takes us on our journey with we find a hermit and he tells us that he saw chaos come back to skylands he saw him come from the clouds or something, I don't know, the guy's afraid of clouds, okay? But he tells us that he saw Chaos come back and find an ancient Archean called the Conquerotron. Chaos wants to use the Conquerotron to find the Fist of Arcus and take over Skylands like normal. Basic bad guy stuff. The Giants have come back as well because we need them, and the Archeans are back. While they are on their journey, the Conquerotron tells Chaos about a map that he can use to find the lost city of Arcus, where the Fist lies. We try to stop Chaos with the help of a ghost robot friend that we find that can control a mech suit. Sadly, Chaos is able to overpower the big mech, and it looks like he kills our best ghost robot friend. Don't worry, he comes back though. Chaos picks up the map, and it kind of just breaks. Like, I, I don't know how it happened, but it just breaks, and he doesn't know what to do. However, Chaos eventually realizes that he can use Glumshanks, and he makes a machine that can see his memories, so he can use the map again. So he goes to his memories, finds the map, and writes it down. Chaos finds out that he needs to make a giant drilling machine, and he does that. And, oh, you probably never heard of it, but his name is Drill X, the giant singing robot. The Skylands defeat this though right after it's created, basically, now making it even harder for Chaos to find the fist. Chaos is just basically out of ideas and asks the Contratron if he knows how to get there, and he tells him that there's a secret entrance that he can take them there to get there. And he does it. It was really simple, actually, and I don't know why Chaos didn't think of doing that before. Chaos goes into Arcus and eventually finds the giant fist. Chaos just walks into the fist because he's too small for it to just go inside of his hand, and it turns him into a giant robot. In doing so, wakes up all the other sleeping Archeans because now they have a monster once again. At the same time, Kermit the Hermit says he knows an oracle that can help us find the lost city. The Skylands go to the oracle, and the oracle puts the Skylands through multiple tests, and once the tests are complete, in return the oracle gives Flynn the coordinates to the secret entrance of Arcus, and as well gives Flynn an Archean chopper that he can fly into the city with. The Skylanders find their way eventually and find Chaos, but Robot Chaos is about to destroy us. But in the nick of time, the Skylanders ghost robot friend comes back with Kermit in his mech suit and helps the Skylanders fight Robo Chaos. In a big robot battle, the Skylanders are able to defeat Robot Chaos and Chaos loses the fist, making him just himself again. He tries to get it back, but the fist just keeps running away and Glumshake saves him while controlling the Conquertron. And a couple of seconds later, the Conquertron shuts all of his power off and hits an island just right in it because his power turns off and he just falls into the island. Of course the Skylanders don't go after him because they need a third game I guess. But somehow Chaos makes his way back home and the very last cutscene of Skylanders we see that his mom is at his castle and this is a pretty good transition into the next game. So in the next game Swap Force we learn of a team of Skylanders that protect the Cloudbreak Islands and more importantly the Elder Elementals while they cause a volcanic eruption every hundred years that replenishes the magic through Skylands. An evil attack was launched on the last eruption which happened 100 years ago, and the Swap Force was able to protect the Elder Elementals from this attack, but they were not able to get away from the volcano in time and got trapped in the eruption, which gave them the ability to swap tops and bottoms. But just like the giants, the volcano eruption blasted them to Earth, and now we found them. And then we get to Flynn, and the next eruption that replenishes all the magic in Skylands is about to happen again. 
and Flynn goes to the Cloudbreak Islands to see it. A new character, Tessa, meets Flynn while she's running away from some greebles with her giant flying chicken whiskers. She meets Flynn obviously while she's doing this, and she tells Flynn that her home, Woodboro, is in danger and he agrees that him and the Skylanders will help her. To escape them, the Greebles, they go through a volcano, and they crash land, and they make their way to Woodboro, saving some of the citizens of Woodboro from the Greebles. Flynn and Tessa eventually meet up with <sighs> Rufus, and he tells Tessa that the village chiefess was captured by the Greebles. At the same time, Chaos has found a new source of evil that he calls Petrified Darkness. Now apparently Chaos is running low on trolls because they are his minions and he needs to find more. So he uses the Greebles. But since they are not evil enough, he uses Petrified Darkness to make a machine called the Evilizer and he uses it on them to make them more evil. And he plans to use the Evilizer on the Elder Elementals. But he only needs to use it on one of them. So when they do the eruption again, that one Evilized Elder Elemental makes the entire volcanic eruption evil, then spreads evil through all Skylands. A lot of evil. Obviously, when Glumshanks hears about this plan, he's pretty cynical, like he always is. But Chaos has had enough of it, and he evilizes Glumshanks. But back to the Skylanders. They, with Tessa and Flynn, saved the Chiefess from the clutches of the evilized Greebles. After this, the first elemental that Chaos goes after is Flashfin, a giant fish that lives in a big water bubble. The Skylanders are able to stop this though pretty easily, and they save Flashman. But this time, Glumshanks is actually doing something evil, and he's in the rampant ruins and is making a giant evil machine that he plans to destroy the Skylanders with. The Skylanders are able to defeat them though, and it takes the evil out of him, which brings him back to his normal, cynical self. Glumshanks comes back to his castle, the Chaos Castle, and Chaos's mom finally makes an appearance in the game. She tells Chaos about her accomplishments on the Cloudbreak Islands and tells Chaos that his plans won't work. The Skylanders save a village somewhere in the desert and they are trying to find the Terra Squid, the next elemental that Chaos is after. One of the citizens there says that he knows a guy that could help him and says his name is Sharpfin. Apparently Tess knows him and says that he's a crook. On the way to Montleyville though, a greeble evil eyes whiskers. This is not all that important though because he basically just turns good like in like 30 minutes. But we also now meet Baron Von Shellshock. And he's taken over the town of Montleyville and also has a German accent for some reason. So to speak. You are now the esteemed guests of the great Baron Von Shellshock, servant of Lord Chaos, and all around power schnitzer. He captures Flynn and Tessa, but the Skylanders free them pretty quickly. The Skylanders defeat Shellshock and the Skylanders also bring Sharpfin to Woodboro to help them. We get to Chaos and he's talking about how he's going to evilize a terror squid and his mother starts talking to him again, but then Chaos mentions that he has made a new creature called the Fire Viper, which will help him turn the e squid evil. The Fire Viper makes its way to the terror squid and the Skylanders end up fighting it and defeating it in the process, which saves the terror squid as well. We see Chaos again now, and his mom has actually finally come to the castle herself and brought a bunch of goons with her, including Mesmerelda. Chaos and the Skylanders are, are after the Frost Hound now, the next elemental, and the Skylanders are able to get a big glowing source of light that will help them through the snow, since the next elemental is somewhere in the Icelands of Skylands and it gets very cold and very hard to see there. Mesmerella try to stop the Skylanders at the same time. The Skylanders defeat Mesmerella though and then are able to get the Frost Hound, the next elemental, and they save him. Now Chaos only has one more available elemental left, the Tree Spirit. Chaos launches an all-out attack on the Tree Spirit by setting all the land around her on fire. The Skylanders work with the firefighters and they are able to get rid of all the fires by the land in the tree spirit. The Skylanders defeat Chaos and his evil ship and are finally able to free the tree spirit and in doing that save all the elder elementals and capturing Chaos as well. And the people of Woodboro are about to celebrate but Chaos's mom makes a giant monologue about why the Skylanders suck and how she's gonna defeat them. She also apparently knows how to make her head big and hologram it all around Skylanders much like Chaos. She takes back Chaos and kidnaps Tessa also. So the Skylanders, with the help of Sharpfin, go to Chaos's base, which is a big spy mission to get through, which kind of gives me Sly Cooper vibes, which I'm not complaining about. Back to the story. The Skylanders fight Chaos Sandra and a big battle ensues with a bunch of her minions, but the Skylanders eventually get to Chaos Sandra, and since she's a portal master, she's able to hide inside the portals, but we find this out 
and that makes that plan useless. And then we defeat her, and somehow we trap her in a giant mirror. I don't know how that works really, but just go with it. Then Chaos appears in a hologram and informs the Skylands while they were fighting his mother, he was adding more petrified darkness and giant stacks to the volcano, which when it explodes will spread evil across Skylands. But while he's putting more and more stacks of the crystals in the volcano it becomes unbalanced and petrified darkness lands on Chaos, turning them into a giant purple monster. The Skylands have to take all the petrified darkness out of Chaos to stop him, so they must get rid of most of the crystals on his body. In a weird boss battle, the Skylanders fight Chaos's toenails and eventually go inside his head where they're able to defeat him. The Skylanders with Flynn, Tesla, and Sharpfin go outside of the volcano before it explodes, but we also see Chaos and Glumshanks and now they have switched tops and bottoms, much like the Swap Force. Now a lot of people think this gets retconned and trapped in, much like how Giants retconned Spider's Adventure, but I don't think this is actually true. We see that the Swap Force can switch tops and bottoms whenever they want to and they can switch back and forth. So what if Chaos and Glumsanks just switch tops and bottoms so they could get back to their regular forms? I guess the Chaos eventually grows to dislike Glumsanks' legs and they swap back and never really talk about it again. I think this is a pretty reasonable way to think about it. In the beginning of the next game, Trap Team, we get told about an old group of bad guys called the Doom Raiders. Strange that we've never heard about them because they were apparently so notorious bad but we've never heard about them until the fourth game, but just go with it. They basically did all the evil stuff until a group of Skylanders called the Trap Team went there and defeated all the Doom Raiders and trapped them into Cloud Cracker Prison. And the cutscenes, Chompy Mage was never a part of the Doom Raiders, so I guess he joined down later. But yeah, they get put into Cloud Cracker Prison for what seems like quite a while. Until wait, let's play a game. Who broke the Doom Raiders out of Cloud Cracker Prison? Was it A, the Skylanders, B, Chaos, or C, Flynn, if you guess B, then congratulations, you're correct and probably got the most easiest question of your life ever answered. Chaos, with a big evil machine of evilness, destroys the Traptanium prison and the explosion sends the Trap Team all the way to Earth and some of the Traptanium that was caught in the explosion morphs into traps and they were sent to Earth as well. You know, basic Skylanders getting sent to Earth stuff. And then the Skylanders though, we have found the Trap Team and the Trap Crystals and we're got about to western style, round up all the bandits and send them back to jail. Well not really, they can also trap enemies and they can fight for us, but to the story. At the same time Chaos breaks out of the villains, Flynn, Callie, and Hugo are visiting the Skylanders Academy, a new place opening the trained Skylanders, and the head founder of it, Buzz, is giving a speech about it, and Roddy Z is about to cut the ribbon to open the Academy. We see Gulper and a huge explosion go to Soda Springs and the game begins. The first Doom Raider the Skylanders take down is Gulper, with the help of Buzz and our NPCs go to try to find the rest of the Doom Raiders and some other villains to try to put back in prison. In a cutscene we see the Doom Raiders in Chaos's hideout and he's talking to them, but they aren't really convinced with his whole evil plan or whatever, and I guess they are about to jump Chaos until the leader Golden Queen tells them not to and they are grateful to him. She also tells Chaos her and Glumshins can stay as long as they go along with her plan, and Chaos reluctantly obliges to this. After this, Max finds the location of the next Doom Raider, the Chompy Mage, since he's the only Doom Raider that actually left an address. Kinda stupid. But she tells the Skylanders about this and they go to capture him. They now have two out of the eight Doom Raiders. Then after this, they also find Chef Pepper Jack's Zeppelin, and the Skylanders go to capture him too, and they do, and now have three out of the eight Doom Raiders. A cutscene plays after this where Chaos and the Doom Raiders have a big argument because Chaos finally gets Golden Queen's plan. She tells Chaos that her whole plan is basically to use a giant machine powered by Green Goo giving her all the gold in the world. Chaos thinks this is a stupid plan and starts talking back and it ends with Chaos getting turned to gold by the Golden Queen and then the Doom Raider steals base along with Glumshanks and leave him there t to die I guess. Chaos and after this for the first time ever admits that he might actually need some help. A bit later, Max informs the Skylanders about our information squid which should be able to help them to find the other Doom Raiders. And the Skylanders get this, but when they get back to the Academy, Chaos reveals that he was inside a fake information squid and he was there the entire time. But he's not there to hurt the Skylanders and says he wants to help because he has grown to hate the Doom Raiders because of their pettiness. He tells the Skylanders how to get Dreamcatcher and where they can find her, and they they go along with this plan, he gives them the location of Dreamcatcher, and she's actually there, he didn't try to trick you, and when we get there, she leaves though, and then he gives you the location of Dreamcatcher again, where he thinks she might be, 
And he's right again, and this time the Skyliners are able to capture her, now having four out of the eight Doom Raiders. Chaos after this has basically won over the trust of Flint and the rest of the NPCs. For now, because of how much he has helped them, and he tells them about the Doom Raider's supply of green goo, and the Skyliners are able to cut off their supply. Now there's only three Doom Raiders left. Well, Chaos is technically a Doom Raider, but we're not counting them right now. The three Doom Raiders being left are Dr. Crankcase, Wolfgang, and the Golden Queen. The Golden Queen does not take lightly to learn that her green goo supply was cut off, but Cranky says they can use cheese and wait 10,000 years so it's really stinky. Obviously, this won't work, but he says they can time travel into the future, but they need a portal master. Chaos. So Crankcase kidnaps Chaos while Chaos and the Skylanders are trying to find him and his base. The Skylanders fight Crankcase and are eventually able to capture him, but Wolfgang halfway through the fight comes out of nowhere and just takes Chaos with him, before the Skylanders defeat Crankcase. Wolfgang now takes Chaos to Time Town. The Skylanders are able to get to Wolfgang, but it's too late. Wolfgang goes rogue and says that he just does not want to listen to the Golden Queen anymore, and he says that the future is all his, and he travels to the future. The Skylanders are able to retrieve Chaos, however. A new NPC, the Pinchy, says that he can take the Skylanders 10,000 years into the future where Wolfgang is because He's like a master of time or something, and he does just that. The Skylanders go into the future, and they're able to sabotage Wilkins' big wolf fort, which would blow everyone's eardrums off. And in one of the hardest boss battles in the entire series, the Skylanders defeat Wolfgang and trap him, leaving only the Golden Queen left. At the end of the level, we see that Golden Queen does get the stinky cheese to power her machine. And she does that. She powers up her machine, basically taking control of all Skylands and getting all the gold as well. The Skylanders go on multiple quests to find a rocket that is able to go to a pirate place to find a giant object that will point them to where a lot of gold is, and they think wherever the most gold is, that's where Golden Queen has to be. And it actually works somehow, and they find her location in the Golden Desert. Seems pretty obvious in hindsight. The Skylanders infiltrate her base, but the Golden Queen turns Kali to gold. But pretty quickly, the Skylanders get Kali back and defeat Golden Queen's battle arena. After this, the Skylanders go straight to the Golden Queen's lair, and in a spectacular boss battle, the Skylanders finally trap her, getting all the Doom Raiders. Or do they have all the Doom Raiders? While they are gone, Chaos went off to the giant machine filled with the stinky cheese, and he betrays the Skylanders. Wow. Shocker. I mean, it was already pretty obvious because he is on the poster for the villains he can capture, so it was pretty obvious no matter what they could have done, but yeah. The stinky cheese gets into his system, and he also gets Traptanium to his system, turning him purple once again, but it's different this time guys, I swear. But he basically turns into a giant trap. This chaos boss battle by far is the most difficult boss battle in the entire series. It's that hard. But the Skylanders eventually defeat and trap chaos. And that brings us to Superchargers. Apparently Activision liked the idea of retconning Chaos from Giants, so they did it in Superchargers. Chaos is back somehow and they just don't tell us why or how. That's probably the biggest question mark in the entire Skylander series on how Chaos turns evil once he got trapped. But let's just get to the story. The Skylanders have disappeared for a while for some reason, again not explained, but Chaos actually gets his way and captures all of the Skylands people, including Kali, Hugo, and Flynn. And more importantly, he also has captured Master Eon. Chaos made a giant Sky Eater that has been eating the sky and plans just to eat all the sky in Skylands. But us, the Portal Masters, have come back and we use the Skylanders to help to get our way back in Skylands. The Skylanders free some well-known NPCs, and then Hugo says that Master Eon left him a book, and he opens it. A hologram of Eon tells us that if we're seeing it, it means he's been captured. He also tells us that he sent an elite team of Skylanders called the Superchargers. They drive vehicles that are powered by legendary Rift engines, and tells us to use the Superchargers to defeat Chaos in the darkness once and for all. Later in a cutscene, we see Moneybone. A character new to console players, but he actually was in the 3DS version of Skylander Swap Force, and Moneybone informs Chaos that Eon is trapped in a giant Traptanian prison. Flynn, Callie, and Hugo get back to the Academy by help of the Skylanders, and the Academy is in ruins, but Buzz, Mags, and Sharpfin are there and they are able to evade capture. Once everything gets situated, the Skylanders go to the Cloudbreak Crag, where the Cloud Breather lives. That can basically tell you anything as long as you have an object of the person you're asking about. Hugo, for some reason, has the Sock of Eon still. The Skylanders get to the place, but it's been overtaken by Chaos' forces. But the Skylanders are able to free the people of Cloudbreaker's Crag, 
and the Cloud Breather informs the Skylanders that Eon is in the land of the undead. But to get to the land of the undead, our ships need to go super fast and need to be powered by a lot of electricity. And it, they need to get the Thunderous Bolt to do this. The Thunderous Bolt is located in Cloud City, and the queen of the town is okay with giving them it. But Lord Stratosphere has a difference in opinion. The Skylanders have to defeat Lord Stratosphere in a battle, and once they do, they retrieve the Thunderous Bolt, giving them like 100 million jillion ults or something stupid like that they say in the game, which can take them to the land of the undead. And after this, they go to the land of the undead, defeat Count Moneybone, and they get Eon back. And he has a body now. Cool. If you can't tell, there is a lot of retconning in his story, but whatever. We get a cutscene after this, and it shows us that the darkness is now a being and talks to chaos. Yan doesn't really know what to do either, but Sharpfin is here to save the day, and he knows of a spell punk that will tell you anything, but yet to beat him in an arena fight. So the Skylanders go to Battle Brawl Island, and after a series of battles and stuff like that, they fight the Spell Slamser, and they defeat him. And he lives up to his bargain, and he tells the Skylanders that there is a spellpunk library that can tell them how to stop the darkness. The Skylanders get there and look through a bunch of books, and they finally find the book that tells them that the Core of Light has actually always been missing a piece. With this information, they need to find the author of the book, Pomfrey LaFuzzbottom. That's right, his name is Pomfrey LaFuzzbottom. While Eon Hugo, Cowley, and Flynn are talking about this, Tessa crash lands at the academy. They talk to Tessa and she says that she can help them find LaFuzzbottom, and she does. LaFuzzbottom actually was collected by a collector, and she says that to get him, they'll have to go through her trials and stuff. Flynn says that the Skylanders can go through her trials and get him. Little did Flynn know that her trial was actually turning them small and having to go through a garden. Nevertheless, the Skylanders are able to get through all of her trials and get Pomfrey LaFuzzbottom. While this is going on, Chaos gets very angry at Glumshanks because the darkness puts it into his head that Glumshanks is useless, so Chaos fires him. Glumshanks somehow finds the academy and he stays there. After a bunch of other shenanigans, the Skylanders get the Eye of the Ancient from the Titans, but after all their work, the Sky Eater makes it to the academy and actually destroys the Core of Light. Our main characters are barely able to escape but only because Glumshank sacrifices himself by relieving Wade from the academy so they can drive away. Don't worry guys, he's not actually dead, I swear. It'd be too dark for a kid's game to do that. But it ends up that he is a prize if you win in the Rodeo Apocalypse Demo Derby. The Skylanders win Glumshanks by winning the derby, and he helps them by telling them the location of the Dark Rift engine, which can help them rid the darkness. There is also this weird plot point where Mags gets kidnapped, by a couple Sky Bandits, but the Skylanders save her pretty quick. Now the Skylanders go inside the Sky Eater itself and defeat Chaos, and definitely, sadly, the worst Chaos boss battle. And they are about to turn on the Dark Rift engine, but the darkness paralyzes them all for a second and stops them, and tells Chaos to destroy them once and for all. But instead, Chaos turns on the Dark Rift engine and the darkness gets sucked into it, basically killing him, quotation marks, because Chaos of the Darkness got too bossy for his liking, and, you know, he kills the darkness, basically. Chaos and the Skylanders make their escape while the Sky Eater explodes. Then the game fakes this out by making us think the darkness is gone and killed, but no, he's back. And in one final boss battle, the Skylanders take on the darkness one-on-one, -on -one, and after a very long fight, the Skylanders defeat the darkness, getting rid of all the evil in Skylands. The reason why the, the darkness never actually was gone was because, like I said, the Core of Light was never actually finished. This makes Chaos good. Well, not really, but he's not doing anything evil, so he's basically good. I would also like to say that Superchargers has the best story out of all the games, and it's not even close. But sadly, gameplay will always be more important to me than story. Superchargers is my least favorite game because of the gameplay, but if it comes down to story, it actually wraps up Skylanders pretty good. But there is still one more game left, which is my favorite game, but definitely not my favorite story. On to Imagineers. Now, even though I love this game, I'll say that its story, they definitely don't take it as seriously as all the other games. But anyway, the story starts off with Chaos finding a new outlet for evil called Mind Magic, and this actually makes sense. Instead of just bringing the darkness back, there is no more darkness, but he uses Mind Magic, and he makes a bunch of evil beings basically like his own evil Skylanders. 
but we're able to defeat his first one. Then Eon tells us about how the Skylands was made by the ancients by using mind magic and how its power has returned. And he has sent Sensei, some of the most powerful Skylanders, to help us along with being able to create our own Skylanders that the Senseis can train. Pretty cool, actually. So this story section will definitely not be as long as the other ones because there's not a lot of story but we get a bucket list of doomlanders because that's what his own version of skyland's called to defeat and eventually we find the brain which is the last ancient in a golden arcade we break him out and he just goes to chaos to help him because chaos found him while you using the helm of ultimate wisdom a couple levels ago but the brain is an ancient which means that he did help create skylanders the brain eventually sends out a brain wave that takes control over every being in skylanders except the dragons because magic i guess spyro takes us to the dragon temple and because of the brain waves sheep have turned evil now and try to attack us it's really weird but we get through them and we get to the other dragons and they stop their brainwaves controlling all the beans in skylands by meditating okay but hey it works the brain's evil spell is gone cool to get to chaos's castle though the skylanders make him a giant cake that they'll hide in because chaos is stupid and he doesn't know when skylanders are hiding inside of a cake it works they send the cake they're like chaos we lost congratulations and he's like yes a cake out pops jetvac it turns out chaos ate jetvac's food and that makes jetvac very mad but he comes along with us and during chaos's boss battle which i might add he turns super saiyan in his boss battle chaos starts bickering with the brain and then the brain just basically joins our side because he gets annoyed of chaos we take down chaos eventually though and they turn him and glumshanks for some i don't know why they're making glumshanks go through this as well like poor glumshanks but they turn him chaos and glumshanks tiny and put him in a jar that's how they defeat the most evil guy in skylands cool in no way it's weird but that's the lore of skyland skylanders it gets weird in the last game but i thoroughly think that for the most part the lore of skylanders is still very interesting now obviously there is more lore like what happened after the games and what happened before the games and the creation of skylands itself but that's really it for the lore of the skylanders games between the years 2011 and 2016 but anyway guys hope you guys have enjoyed this video and thank you guys for watching